Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a new fractal tone tutorial for you and this is how to dial in the John Mayer I Don't Trust Myself With Loving You solo tone. Now if you want to help support the channel please hit the subscribe button, that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section if you're digging these tutorials. And a couple other ways to help support the channel, uh, follow the full tutorial all the way through that helps the channel to grow as well. And if you don't want to do that, I've always given the option of purchasing the preset. Now this is a full eight scene preset, but I'm giving you a little bit of a snippet of one of the scenes. So if you want information on that, the email is in the description box below. So this particular tone I find to be kind of unique in the uh, continuum era. Uh, overall, that whole album, it seems kind of raw and roomy. And what I mean by that is they probably did a mixture of close mic and some room miking. Uh, and that's kind of uh, what I think is really unique about this particular tone. It seems clean to me, but it seems like there's something else going on. Uh, could be maybe they took from Stevie Ray Vaughan and did a little bit of dimension uh, chorus on in post, but to me it kind of feels more like more room miking. So, we're gonna go ahead and dive into FM9 Edit, but I guess before we do that, uh, using my mic little SX Custom. This is a Lala Blonde. We're gonna stay on the neck pickup. Uh, the volume is gonna be all the way up, and we're gonna have the tone rolled back to like seven and a half-ish. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out my little guitars, they're awesome. I use um, these exclusively, um, except for review guitars, but these are awesome. So let's go ahead and dive into FM9 Edit right now. All right, so here it is. Uh, this is my Steel String Singer ODS preset. Now we do know that John used the Steel String Singer when he purchased it for this recording. Uh, not 100% sure if he paired it with other amps, but we're doing a Steel String Singer workaround and ODS uh, Dumble type of combination here. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into the amps first and then we'll go uh, effects and then the last part will be the cabs. So here it is. Let's go to the ideal tab. This is the ODS clean. Here are my settings. I did give it some fatness with the fat switch and jumping all the way down to the dynamics tab. Just gave it a little bit of input dynamics. Now I have uh, a lot of tutorials on this particular steel string singer workaround, but here it is, we'll just run through it quickly. Uh, the SV base amp, and then make a bunch of changes. So here are the settings in the ideal tab. Preamp, make sure you set it to skyline and mid tone stack. Power amp, not 100% sure if I did anything here, it's been quite a while. Did change the tube type and some cathode follower right here. Maybe a little bit of supply sag, but that could be the default. Speaker impedance curve, I changed to the 4x12 rumble. Gave it a tiny bit of a happy face, so make sure you follow these, uh, these parameters. And then the dynamics, here we go. We have a little bit of input dynamics and gain enhancer as well. Uh, I like that for more of like the clean to clean-ish type of tones. It just kind of broadens the dynamic range. The reverb is kind of my go-to. Now you might want to mess with the level and the uh, decay or the time uh, based on what you're feeling, but these are kind of my go-to settings. The drive is the clone Chiron, the Klon clone, and we don't know what he used. I'm sure he probably used either a Tube Screamer or the Blues Breaker, but who knows. 
Uh, I just found that this did the job uh, pretty well for me. Now onto the more important stuff, the uh, cabs. So this is factory 176 and 177. These are both room mic IRs, set to ultra res. One's 50% left and the other one right. I just feel like once again, it gives that kind of roomy feel that you get with uh, the Continuum album. Uh, preamp, I've been really liking the vintage ones. It's a high quality, just kind of very, very subtle. A little bit of high cut here, no low cut, because I'm kind of going for that bassy type of thing that you get in the solo. And some more room level. I think I'd give it some room diffusion as well. And then uh, another thing that's really important is aligning these. Uh, since I'm playing through headphones, it's really uh, more apparent to me. So I had to bring the right side uh, 9.4 millimeters uh, to be able to align the the phasing uh, appropriately. So you just want to do it until you get the most bass and to where it's not like one really heavy on one side and the other. But let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and turn maybe the drive off and let's go ahead and turn the reverb off as well so you can just kind of hear what it sounds like, kind of dry. Sorry, it's been a while since I played. We just got back from vacation. Uh, so let's go ahead and add the reverb. So it's just got that room feel. Uh, wish we were able to get the, the full res. Uh, then it's just a little bit longer tail, but here we go. So it really meshes together really well. And then let's add the drive. Let's see where it is right here. Let's go ahead and play the full solo. So once again, I think the uh, takeaways from the solo are there's a real boominess to it. It's clean, but there's a little bit of bite and then the room feel is super important. Uh, and that's why I used uh, the two room mic IRs, both the same ones. Uh, and it just gives that feel almost like there's a chorus going on, kind of like what Stevie Ray Vaughan would do uh, in post. but. Uh, that is it. This is uh, one of my favorite tones. Hope you enjoyed it. Try it yourself. Uh, again, make sure you adapt it to your guitar pickups. These are really low output, so you might want to dial some of the gain back, maybe some of the level back as well. But I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.